Shalom. Barak the Yahweh, Barashim, Yahweh Shai, Barashim, Rekar Kadash. All praises and glory stuff we do, especially in the times we're living in. Much honors and respects to the apostles and others, great millstone, and to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and truth, rightfully dividing the word of truth, I say Shalom. All right, back for another quick lesson. And I'm going to title this Prophecy in Parables. All right. And this is a perfect example of that. So we're going to read, all right, this parable here showing you prophecy. All right. And giving you the breakdown. But first, I'm going to read it straight through. And then we're going to get into breaking it down for you so that you get what? The understanding of what it's actually saying and talking about. All right. In prophecy. All right. All right. This is Ezekiel 17 and 24. And all the trees of the field. All right. The trees represent people. We'll prove that to you. We'll show you that. The field represents the world. All right. So all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, that's Yahweh in the Hebrew Bible, in the Hebrew text, read from right to left in the Hebrew characters. That's what you'll find when you see the word Lord in small caps. It would be a son's name, Yahweh Shai. All right? So that I, the Lord, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree. Who's the high tree? You're going to find out that that's the wicked. That's Esau, Edom, the white man. All right? Again, we'll prove that through the precepts. All right? Have exalted the low tree. Who's the low tree? Those are the Israelites. You Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans that make up the 12 tribes. So, have dried up the green tree, right, which is the high tree, Esau. That's what the Lord is doing right before your eyes. He's bringing him down, bringing him out of power, all right? Ultimately, that will come to its end when the Lord sends the last and final plague, that thermonuclear fire, the ICBMs coming from the other nations, including America's own allies, all right? That ultimate destruction you read about in Revelations 18, you read in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, all right? So it's all over the scriptures, Jeremiah 49, 50, 51, all right? Joel, the 2nd chapter, all right? Uh, Revelations, the ninth chapter, all right? You understand? It's all over the place. All right? Uh, Ezekiel, all right, the 35th chapter. All right? You know, uh, Isaiah, the 13th chapter. All right? Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Okay? Isaiah, the 47th chapter. All right? It's all over the place. It's all over the scriptures. All right? About America's destruction. All right? And I have made the dry tree, right? Dry tree, the dry bones, the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel chapter 37. All right? You understand, people? Okay? So it's talking about the Israelites that have made the, the dry tree, which is the low tree, I have made them to flourish. And I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it. You see? He has prophesied it. All right? Into existence, which is exactly what we do. When we prophesy, we bring this word out, we're bringing it into existence, all right, into happening. And again, it was already prophesied. We just have to live it out now, all right? We already have the victory. All right, let's get into this. Give me a minute. All right, this is Psalm 78 and 2. And I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old. Let me give you a precept to that. Give me a minute. We're going to go to Proverbs, the first chapter. Proverbs, the first chapter. We'll start at verse 5, read down to verse 7. A wise man will hear. You know what it means to hear? It means to understand. When you go into that word here, in the blue letter of the Bible concordance, it means to understand, to be able to have uh, discernment. Okay, having insight, able to perceive, okay, able to 
if you have those things, then you're able to what? To teach and instruct. All right? So a wise man will hear and will increase learning. See? And a man of understanding, which means is he's able to see and hear, shall attain unto wise counsel. There's no wiser counsel than the Most High, Yahweh, and of course, his son, Yahweh Shai, Mahamachiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right? There's no Jesus Christ. It's not his name. All right. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, right, thereof, the words of the wise and their dark saints, as in parables, right? You understand? As in prophecies. You understand, people? Right? As in allegories, which means symbolism. And the scriptures are full of it, of all those things. All right? So you have to be able to get into the words, the etymology of words, in the Greek, the Hebrew, the Latin. Do you understand? The fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is the beginning of knowledge. I repeat, fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And boy, ain't that the truth. All right? All right, give me a minute. This is Mark 8, 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. See? I told you, trees equal people. You see? All right, give me a minute. Right? Isn't that what we read here? In all the trees of the field, right? And I told you the trees represent people. We just proved it. Mark 8, 24, right? Now we're going to go in all the trees of the field. We're going to prove that the field is talking about the world. Give me a minute. Matthew 13 and 38. The field is the world. You see? And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, which would be the Israelites, made up of you Negro Latinos and Native Americans, plus our brothers and sisters that are scattered into the other nations, okay? that may look like the other nation, speak the other nation's tongue, nonetheless, they're Israelites by the seed of their fathers. That's pursuant to Numbers 118. All right? And we tell you that all the time. All right? But the tares are the children of the wicked one. There you go, people. All right? And again, this stuff can link up with what we just read with uh, Matthew's, the uh, 25th chapter, where the Lord will separate you know, uh, putting the goats to his left, which are the wicked, all right? And to his right, he will put his sheep, which are those Israelites that will inherit the kingdom, the elected Israelites. All right. Uh, give me a minute. Remember, I had asked you, who is that Green Bay tree? Well, now you're going to get your answer, all right? See, I have seen the wicked in great power. Again, who's the wicked? We're going to do that. We're going to go to Job 9.24, Malachi 1 and 4. We're going to do that. Let's just finish reading this. And I have seen the wicked in great power, which is Esau Edom, the white man, spreading himself like a green bay tree. Now are you people starting to see the picture? All right? That high green bay tree. Okay? Okay. All right, represents Esau, Edom, the white man. And the low tree represents us Israelites, the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans that make up the 12 tribes of Israel. There you go. Give me a minute. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, the white man. And again, he got it because we broke the law of statutes and commandments. Okay. But again, it was prophesied unto Moses that we would, you know, uh, go into captivity, suffer the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, which also covers and tells you who the Lord will send upon us, all right, that flieth by the eagle, all right, Deuteronomy 28, 48, 49, 64, okay? You understand? 
All right? And he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. The judges are the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, his son, Yahweh Shai. All right? And the patriarchs, the Israelites. He covered the faces. He put up his own images. You understand? And that's all over the scriptures as well. All right? Telling you that. During the time of the Renaissance, that wasn't the beginning of it. You have to go back uh, when they first come into power, calling themselves the Greeks under Alexander the Great and uh, his father, King Philip the Macedonian, which you read about in First Maccabees. All right? So, if not, where and who is he? We go to Malachi 1 and 4. Give me a minute. All right? All right, Malachi 1 and 4, right to the point. Whereas Edom say, if we are impoverished, again, this is the time of the Renaissance when they would come back into power after their Greco-Roman empires, after being put down a thousand years, right? When you read it in Revelations, the 20th chapter, it tells you the Lord refers to them as the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, okay? And that he would be put down for a thousand years, in other words, not able to deceive the nations, that's what it will tell you there. But then after a thousand years, while the Israelites ruled, right, then he would have to be loose a little season and come back into power, which was what? During the Renaissance, okay? And Renaissance, by the way, means rebirth. So that's rebirth for the Edomites back into the power seat. So that's what this is talking about here. We, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, the host of armies, that's what hosts mean. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border witness. That's what the Lord calls them, the border witness, every border of every nation, that's what they bring. And you see, they're a people, they're a nation, the Edomite. That's their real nationality, all right? That, that word white is a social construct created by them to further hide themselves in plain sight, okay, in 1681. Look it up. The people against whom the Lord have indignation, which means righteous anger forever. It's not the Lord angry with the wicked every day. Yes, he is. Let's go to Isaiah the 34th chapter. Give me a minute. All right, this is Isaiah the 34th chapter, but we'll end this here. We'll come right back with part two. All right, show off.